The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. I want us to define a few important uh, genetic terminology. It's going to be important for us to know what some of these things are moving forward because these are terms that I'm going to be using fairly frequently. So genotype is what we're beginning with. The genotype basically refers to the genetic makeup of a cell. So it's the genetic makeup of a cell, an organism, or an individual. The phenotype, on the other hand, is the outward, outward observable characteristics or traits of an organism. So to give you an example, the phenotype in the case of the garden pea plant would be the flower color. That's the outwardly observable characteristic. The genotype would be the alleles that actually determine that flower color. So that's the difference between genotype and phenotype. Now, zygosity, on the other hand, it refers to the degree of similarity of alleles for a character in an organism. So zygosity is better understood by looking at those three different terms that fall under it. So I'm going to start with homozygous. So homozygous basically means or refers to a genotype that consists of two identical alleles for a character at a given locus. So I'm going to explain that using the example to the right of the screen right there. So a homozygous genotype is one that has two identical alleles. So that's a homozygous genotype. So typically in genetics, Dominant alleles are denoted by a capital letter and recessive alleles are denoted by a small, usually italicized letter. So a homozygous genotype or a genotype that's homozygous, for instance, for purple flower color would be indicated by two capital P's, P for purple color, and that would indicate that it's homozygous. So both alleles that determine flower color are both dominant. So they're both identical and that's what we refer to as a homozygous state. Now heterozygous on the other hand refers to a genotype that consists of different alleles for a character at a given locus. So that's actually what we saw in the first filial generation. Now a genotype consisting of different alleles. So for instance we can have a genotype that has the allele, the dominant allele for purple flower color but one that also has a recessive allele that causes white flower color denoted by a small letter P. So this is an example of a heterozygous genotype. Okay? You have two different alleles. The alleles are non-identical. They're not the same at this locus. So that's what we refer to as the heterozygous state. And the hemizygous, or what hemizygous means, is that it's a genotype that consists of a single copy of a particular gene. So remember I said that for any one gene you have two alleles. So for instance for the gene that determines purple flower character or the character that determines purple flowers, you have two alleles that are determining it. So you have one dominant allele that causes purple flower color and you have one uh, recessive allele that causes white flower color. Now both of these alleles are located at the lo same locus, the same position on a chromosome. Now, when we talk about the hemizygous state, we're talking about a gene or a character that's determined by only one allele. So it's hemi meaning half. Hemizygous, a genotype consisting of a single copy of a particular gene because genes usually occur in pairs, pairs of alleles, but in the hemizygous state, we're only talking about a single copy, a single allele for a particular gene. Now, a wild type strain or wild type variety is basically or wild type allele is basically one that encodes a phenotype that is most common in a natural population and a mutant allele would be any other form of the allele that is different from the wild type so for instance in the case of the garden pea plant if purple was the most common color you see in all garden pea plants then the wild type allele would be that for purple color and if the mutant one or the white color is something that was seen very rarely, then the mutant allele would be uh, the recessive one that determines white flower color. So the wild type is basically uh, the allele that you see most commonly or that appears most commonly in the natural population of the species under consideration. 
So I want to direct your attention to the right side of the screen right there where we have a diagram that shows basically what happened in the second filial generation of Mendel's cross. So we have the phenotype on the left right there. So he observed purple to white flowers at the ratio of three to one. So for every one uh, white flower he saw, there were three purple ones. Now, the genotypic considerations are slightly different. And what I mean by that is that you can have more than one genoty genotype resulting in the same phenotype. And I'll explain that. For instance, if you look at the top right there, if you have a homozygous dominant genotype that has two dominant alleles which uh, produce purple flower color, that uh, um, the flowers of that plant are obviously going to be purple. Now, if we're talking about a heterozygous state in which you have one dominant allele for uh, purple color and you have the recessive allele for white color, all those plants are still phenotypically purple. They're still outwardly purple because the allele for purple color is dominant over the allele for white color. So it masks it or suppresses it. And as you can see, all of those plants are going to be purple. So we have two different genotypes. This one, number one, the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous one that are contributing to the same exact phenotype. And lastly, you can obviously have the homozygous recessive genotype that will cause the white uh, flowers. So what this cross actually tells us is that for a plant to have white colored flowers in this case, it would have to have a homozygous recessive genotype. It would have to have both recessive alleles at that locus for that character for white color to prevail in its flowers. So that kind of explains uh, what you were seeing or what we saw in that F2, that second filial generation. And as you can see, the ratios are slightly different. So the phenotypic ratio would be three to one. So we're talking about three purple versus one white flower. And the genotypic ratio is actually different because you have one homozygous recessive genotype, you have two heterozygous genotypes, and you have one, I mean, sorry, you have one homozygous dominant genotype, you have two heterozygous genotypes, and you have one homozygous recessive genotype. So a ratio of one to two to one, one to two to one. So as you can see, you can, you can have different genotypes uh, giving you the same phenotype. So what I want us to do is now that we've defined and gone over this key genetic terms, let's delve even further into analyzing the cross that Mendel used to, to arrive or, uh, to determine his law of segregation.